So Nisi was nice enough to send me the new Nisi cinema lenses, the prime lenses, the Nisi Athenas as they're called. And in this video, we're gonna be talking about these lenses and how I use them in a real shooting environment. Now I was pretty interested in these lenses when they were announced, given that they were supposed to have this micro contrast to them. This kind of elusive thing that we talk about with lenses in the higher end market, micro contrast. Contrast that's more across the board in your image, more like in the mid-tones on its way out. First contrast on the lens that's actually bringing up your highlights and bringing down your shadows like something you would do in post. That micro contrast is something that gives you this kind of pop, this texture, this detail, this realism to an image that it's hard to get out of a lot of affordable lenses. But Nisi has claimed that they've come in and they have this really amazing micro contrast on the Athena Primes and I wanted to see that for myself. So some quick specs on these lenses, they're all ranging in the $1,200 price point per prime lens. The kit that Nisi let me borrow had a 14, a 25, a 35, a 50, and an 85 millimeter in it. What's really cool about these lenses is that they're all the same size and weight which is something that's very unique on the market already. So for the price, this is a very competitive price. There are a lot of other manufacturers out right now making lenses in this price point. Cinema lenses all have really nice housing and bodies and gearing on them. But the Nisi Athenas seem to really punch above their weight class. And I already feel like the size and weight is already a big factor. If you go to use these lenses on a gimbal, you're not gonna have to rebalance the gimbal when you swing to a different lens, which is just pretty much already amazing right out of the gate. Regardless of these lenses are optically better than the other lenses. So these lenses are designed for people that want the cleanest image possible. And there really is no character to these lenses. But that being said, I feel like optically these lenses still look better than a lot of other lenses on the market that apparently don't have much character either. So all the lenses are the same size. They all have a 77 millimeter filter thread on the front of them. They have an 80 millimeter outer diameter for your matte box. They basically come in every mirrorless mount right now. They come in R, F, L, E, G mount, and then of course the PL mount that we used in this video. And on the mirrorless versions, you can actually use drop-in filters on the back, which Nisi produces for these lenses, which is also a really cool feature. Now, if you wanna do this with the PL lenses, you have to screw in on the back of the lens. I didn't actually have any filters to try out for this, but it seems like a pretty interesting concept, being able to just put your filters behind the lens. I already do that on some of my adapters for my Komodo, and it's something that I've been using a lot and I really like. And with talking with some of my friends, we thought that it might be kind of cool if they could do something like the airy signature primes are doing where you can actually add filtration in the back that changes the optics of the lens if you could actually give the lens more character not just by putting like a mist in there or something like that a blooming filter you know a low contrast filter but if you can actually change the optics and like change the bokeh by throwing another lens in the back that would be really interesting and i'd love to see that in the future so nisi that's just a suggestion if you could do something like that in the future i think a lot of us would really buy into that system but you do have to pick a mirrorless mount or a pl mount this isn't one of the lens manufacturers that you're able to actually swap them out, given that they're trying to have that drop-in filter option on the mirrorless mount, you're not gonna be able to swap out the backs and put a PL mount instead of a mirrorless mount on. So you kind of have to pick your poison when you're going into it and just commit to one lens mount when you get these lenses. So these lenses are optically very, very sound. I think it's honestly kind of incredible how sound these lenses are. When you pick up these lenses, you are going to have one of the most reliable lenses that you can get for this price. A lot of other lenses in this market that you compare them to are going to still have some caveats, whereas the Nisi's don't seem to have that. Optically speaking, the flares are very controlled. The flare coloring is very controlled. The bokeh rendition is really nice. They have a 10 blade aperture, so you have really nice circular bokeh. They shoot at T19, which is pretty nice. They also cover full frame, and overall they're just really nice lenses. So if you watched my last video, I tested an old Red Dragon camera because I thought those are kind of cool cameras to be talking about right now because they're so inexpensive now and they produce such high quality and they shoot at a high resolution. So I actually tried the Dragon with the Nisi Athenas for that test footage. So all the test footage in that last video was actually shot on the Athenas. So in that test footage, it wasn't quite how I normally shoot things. What I wanted to do was I wanted to try out these lenses in a practical environment, but I also wanted to use every single lens in the kit. Normally I'd probably stay in the mid range of lenses like a 35, a 50, 25, but for this I actually started with the 85 and then I kind of moved into different lenses, the 25 and then the 35. 
some shots with the 50. And then at the end there, I even threw in the 14 millimeter. So all the lenses in the kit shoot at T19, except for the 14 millimeter, which is a T2.4 lens. And even though the front glass on that does protrude out and get very wide angle, it's a very wide angle lens with very minimal distortion, might I add, it does actually still have filter threads and an 80 OD if you want to put a matte box on it. So it's pretty nice that Nisi was able to accomplish that even with such a wide lens. All the lenses seem to be color matched and just work really well together. And something else to add to the optical quality is that it was also very minimal chromatic aberration. I talk about chromatic aberration quite a bit on this channel and sometimes chromatic aberration can be interesting and add character to your lens. And normally if you don't want that, you need to get something like an APO prime. So the glass is completely managed to get rid of all chromatic aberration. Whereas on this, they say it's just very minimal and I really didn't notice it on much. I think that maybe there is a smidge on the 35 or something like that. But in my testing in this practical environment, I never saw any chromatic aberration at all. They have an anti-glare coating, so you know the image is not gonna get washed out or the contrast isn't gonna go away when the sun or a light hits it. And they also have minimal focus breathing, which is very rare when it comes to these affordable lenses. You know, the longer you get on the lens, you're going to see some focus breathing. It's just to be expected. But with these lenses, I really didn't ever even notice it at all when shooting it in a practical environment. I love it when you just don't even tell it the focus is racking on an image. I just think that looks really nice. And these lenses definitely accomplish that. Let's take a quick break real quick to talk about this video's sponsor, which is Squarespace. Squarespace is an all-in-one platform to present your work online. You can start with one of their best-in-class templates or using Squarespace's next-generation web design system, Fluid Engine. You can customize every detail with the reimagined drag-and-drop technology for desktop or mobile. Or maybe you want to start an online store to sell your photography or other products. Squarespace has all the built-in functionality to get one of those up and running quickly. And I've actually been using Squarespace to run my online stores for almost a decade now. And of course, if you're like me, you're probably looking to build a portfolio, which Squarespace has a ton of features for that very thing. You can even create private galleries for client work using these tools. So if you're looking for a home for your work, well, you can just do that with Squarespace. Click the link in the description to get 10% off. And I wanna thank Squarespace for sponsoring this video. So really from an optical standpoint, there's really not much to say. It's like, if you want the most reliable, sound, perfect kind of looking image for this price point, these are the lenses to buy. It really just seems like the go-to kit for anything that you want clean. Maybe you can add filtration on top of that if you're looking to give a little bit of character, but if you just want like the straight out of the box lenses, these are like unbeatable, I would say at this price point. Now there are a couple things that I did notice with them that are worth talking about. I did have the PL mount versions for this test and the PL mount version did not work with one of my PL mounts on my Komodo. It definitely worked on the old PL mount that I had for the Red Dragon, given that that's a really big mount. But some of these new mirrorless adapters, the PL mounts have different barrel sizes on the inside. And in order for Nisi, I'm guessing, to make them all the same size and shape, they had to do some kind of stuff on the back end to get that the back element to kind of be in the same spot, it does protrude out pretty far out the back of the lens. So if you do have a PL mount that has a kind of smaller barrel size, they may not fit on that. So I was using my Poco Mophage adapter. I didn't even try to use it with the drop-in filter and only the 25 millimeter was able to fit on that adapter. Now that's kind of an issue more with Mophage than it is with Nisi, but these Nisi lenses do protrude a lot and some PL lenses tend to have this issue, but this just kind of makes sense because they're making a mirrorless version and a PL version and usually there's an optical compromise with that. In order to do that, they had to do something here. And so that's why those optics come so far out the back. It did, however, work on a Metabones PL mount. I'm sure it works on the Nisi PL mount. And some of those other PL mounts, I'm sure will be fine, like a wooden camera one. But just you need to be careful about PL mounts when using these lenses. Now your full size, airy standard PL mount is going to do just fine with these lenses, just like it did on the Red Dragon. So there's really just not a lot to talk about these lenses. They just look really good. They are for sure the best lenses I've ever tested at this price point, and I wouldn't even remotely hesitate to recommend them. There is just something about the separation and the apparent micro contrast that makes them just look so nice. I really can't describe it, but these lenses really feel like something that is much more expensive than they are. Now I've shot on a higher end lenses before, and there's a certain quality that you get from those more expensive lenses, and it's some of that quality is really showing through on the Nisi Athenas. Even the separation from the background to the foreground, I feel like these lenses are not very flat, which I feel like a lot of the other affordable lenses on the market right now kind of have this flatness to them. I won't name any names in this video, but there's some other lenses I've tested and there's just something about them I'm like, I can tell it's a cheap lens even though there's not a lot of flaws going on in the image. There's something about the Athenas that just 
feels a little bit better and a little bit nicer than they should. I really like the color rendition. It, there's not any weird magentas or any weird warming coming out of it. Now, no lens is perfect, but from what I can tell, these lenses are gonna give you the best bang for the buck overall if you're looking for something that is close to perfect as possible. So I really enjoyed shooting on these lenses. I have not a lot to complain about. Just worked is exactly as advertised and I'm really excited to use them more in the future on projects that really call for something like this, you know, something that's a much more clean image or like a corporate job or something that you just know you're kind of running and gunning and you don't want the image to get washed out or you don't want to see chromatic aberration. Maybe you're doing visual effects work and you want to be able to punch in. Well, these do cover, they do cover up to 46 millimeters of sensor size. So they'd obviously cover any of the full frame sensors out today with great resolution across the board. So if that's something you're looking for, I would definitely consider these lenses. So if you found this video helpful, please like and subscribe to the channel. Comment down below what you think about the Athenas. And until next time, guys, I'm Sensor Sakurai. See ya.